Kevin Wheeler here at Mercy Sports Medicine with Dr. Brian Mahaffey. And Doctor, I, I get a lot of questions from parents, from friends, and even from some young players regarding baseball about curveballs. We're seeing a lot of arm injuries in the major leagues, and there are people have all kinds of theories. And whether those things are directly connected or not, we know that there's a certain age and there are certain precautions you want to take when you're a young baseball player. So let's talk about curveballs and the right time to start considering those things as a part of your arsenal when you're a young pitcher. Absolutely. Um, we, we are seeing a lot of, um, of elbow injuries uh, in professional baseball and at high levels of professional baseball at this, uh, at this time. Um, it doesn't surprise me that we are. Um, we have started, um, both of us play, play baseball. Um, the, the most games that, that I played in a, in a season in the summer was about uh, 80 to 90 and that was when I was in college. Um, my high school team and, and with uh, summer ball was about 60 games. Most of these kids start whenever they're 8, 9, 10 years old with travel games playing 90 to 100 games uh, in, a, in a year, in a season. And so we're putting increased stress across um, a joint that has a, uh, that the ligament is immature, but also the bone is immature. And the growth plate that, uh, that is on the inside of the elbow is very susceptible, susceptible to having an injury if you're throwing sliders, curveballs, uh, uh, fork balls, split, uh, split finger fastballs, those type of things. Um, and, and it does increase your risk as well as if you're throwing more than 75 pitches um, in a week, not per league that you're playing in, but in nice. a week. Um, and uh, there's a study a couple years ago that came out that showed that it was very, very helpful for these kids to, to rest from, from competitive throwing for at least three months out of the year. Um, when, when can you start throwing a curveball and breaking pitches? As I tell kids, when you start to shave. That's about the time that that growth plate on the inside of your elbow will start to close and you can start working on that. Um, I, I, told, I tell young pitchers, if you can learn how to get people out with a fastball and a change up and protect your elbow, you're gonna have more strength with your arm, you're gonna have more velocity, you're gonna know how to pitch, and then when you start adding a third and fourth pitch, you're gonna be a better pitcher when it really matters in high school and, and then on into college and every uh, and, and whatever else uh, that comes about after that. A lot of good reasons, both strategically as a ball player and physically, just as a human being, sure. to stay away from those things at those early ages. And reality, and you know this well, you're just fooling young hitters who aren't prepared to handle that. You're not really Absolutely. doing anything that makes you better. Absolutely, just kind of playing a little parlor Absolutely. trick. Absolutely, you know, and uh, you're, you're absolutely correct. And. And I, I always ask this question, um, they, uh, name one uh, pitcher in the Little League World Series who's ever pitched in the major leagues. You can't do it. There's been plenty of kids who's played in the Little League World Series, but they didn't pitch. Um, and at that age, with them throwing curveballs and doing that, uh, personally, I can't watch the Little League World Series because I, I know what clinically they're doing uh, with that and you have to be very very cautious and protective of the elbow and of the shoulder at that point do things correctly uh, work on their their good biomechanics good pitching mechanics so as they do develop and go through uh, puberty and mature and, and are able to start adding those things that's when you become uh, a, a, a better athlete and a better pitcher you touched on a couple things there that would fall in line with prevention, like avoiding these things entirely. But mm -hmm. when it comes to arm injuries, even outside of curveballs, what are the kinds of things that young ball players should be thinking about aside from rest? Because that's going to be one of those obvious ones is making sure you're not overworking, but things sure. you can do to prevent the more serious injuries. There's probably going to be something. If you play for long enough, something's going to go wrong. But we're talking about early age things that aren't normal. Sure. Um, you know, one of the things, and, and everyone who's played youth baseball, uh, can look back on that or if they're doing it right now and, and pick out the three or four guys that have a great arm on their team. And invariably the kids with a great arm pitch, catch, and play third base. Um, and all three of those positions, especially pitching and catching, you're constantly throwing. You never rest your arm and you're throwing at a high intensity level. So that's a, that's a risk factor as well. 
um, for, for, uh, for those recurring injuries. So it's very, very smart to, to have that period of time in there to rest. Um, you know, ultimately, if you, if you win a game at 10 years old, or if you win 80% of your games on your team when you're 10 years old, but you can't play because you, you've done damage and have to have your ulnar collateral ligament repaired um, in, in high school, um, you're, not, you're not helping yourself. Um, the other thing I, I, I will say that there's a lot of people that think, well, I'll just get my ligament repaired and I'll come back and I'll be better than I, than I, uh, than I was before because it's stronger. Yes, the, the graft is stronger, but clinically in what you see whenever the studies are done, that most people, when, when you look at the 92% success rate, what that means is you're able to come back, if you tore it in high school, you're able to come back and throw one pitch in high school. Mm. That doesn't mean that you had success of going on to college or professional. What it means is you're able to usually return to the same level that you were before, but you usually don't progress past that point um, the odds are against you uh, with that. So just having the surgery is not the answer whenever it occurs until, until, until that happens. Um, and, and that's something that I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'll just have, have the surgery. Big difference. There are a lot of similarities, obviously, between people who play baseball at a young age and the major leagues. You're playing the same game, sometimes sure. even the same size ball field, for example. But that concept there is different for kids than major leaguers. With major leaguers, you're talking about people that have already basically maximized their potential. Sure. So if they get back to that maximum, that's fine. But when exactly. you're 13 or 14, you haven't reached the maximum. So when you're looking at that idea and you're trying to manage these things uh, as a young player or even as a parent, what do you? how do you know that something is different than what would be considered normal pain? I mean, you're gonna have arm soreness if you play a lot of sports sure. or a lot of baseball. So let's talk a bit about transitioning into pain and how bad it should be. Is it normal for kids to have some pain or the difference between soreness and pain? Sure. Um, one of the rules that I always tell people, if you get up from doing something, whatever it was, the next morning you're sore from what you did, that's, that, that's usually a, a marker uh, that there can be a concern. With the youth pitcher, you're going to have some soreness just from throwing. If that soreness continues for a day or two or is worsening, then you most certainly need to be cautious about, about trying to throw through that. If you have any uh, pop or acute pain or lose range of motion, those are, are, are huge red flags for that. Um, and those are, those are very, very uh, important to, to find them quickly treat them correctly with appropriate rest and then rehab. The other part about the, the, the rehab is everyone starts again looking just around the elbow. You have to get the arm working with the rest of your body. You have to become a better athlete. You have to engage your whole body. Um, one of the things that, that it, as, a, as a parent in telling parents and telling kids, the best thing you can do when, when you're a preteen, teen, going through, play as many sports as you can. Because you train yourself to be an, be an athlete, you don't overload any one thing, do the same thing over and over again. As a throwing athlete, what tends to you tend to do is strengthen on one side. You, you forget the other half of your body because you always are doing things on that, on that one side. Uh, and so being a well-rounded athlete, will help you decrease your chances of injury at the time and in the future, but you'll be a better athlete, you'll have a much better chance of when you focus in on one sport to be successful at that sport. And then also finally kind of close it out here because we've mentioned a couple of different guidelines and mm -hmm. how when to stay from curve also wait till you can shave before you start with those breaking balls. But pitch counts, you mentioned that earlier, but maybe we can get finished with that in a little more detail because Paying attention to how often you're throwing at maximum effort sure. is, is a big deal. There's a difference between playing catch sure. and pitching in a competitive game environment. Absolutely. It's limiting those things that you have to be really careful about. Yes. You know, throwing at maximum effort uh, more than 75 times during during a week will put you put you at risk. But going out and playing Same catch in the backyard. Kids under, you know, once yeah. you, before you've started shaving, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and I, and I use that because most people will say 14, 15. I've seen 17, 18 year old kids who aren't shaving, that they're not physically developed. Right. And they're trying to throw curve balls and, do, and, and get 
little league elbow at that age because they're physically not ready to do that yet. Um, but, I mean, you'll have some kids that are 12, 13 that start shaving. Okay, they're ready to start doing that. Will they be a much better pitcher whenever they're that age and be dominant? Yes, they will. But sooner or later, the kids are going to catch up to them. You mentioned little league elbow. Is that how, how different is that from a number, another elbow injury? Is that just a, a specific description of a kind of pain? Sure. Little league elbow is, is essentially the, the injury and the spectrum of injury related to the, to the growth plate on the inside okay. of your elbow. And that, that's just what, what it's called. And that injury only occurs in throwing athletes and gymnasts from weight-bearing activity. You won't see it with any other activities.